While we've hopefully learned about Faraday's law of inductance, did you know there's actually a circuit component related to it? Besides capacitors, one final circuit component that we learn about in AP Physics C is known as an inductor, notated by the symbol shown here. Now, the basic function of an inductor as a circuit component is to resist the changes in current produced, but let's quickly take a look at the math behind this coil of wire. The fundamental definition of the inductance of an inductor is that inductance equals the number of coils times the magnetic flux all divided by the current in the coils of wire. However, applying this equation to a solenoid or coil of wire and realizing that we can calculate the magnetic field inside of a solenoid using Ampere's law, we can arrive at the inductance of a solenoid, where mu naught represents the permeability of free space, a constant with a value of 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th. But how does this inductor function within a circuit? Well, the basic idea of inductors is they operate on Faraday's law. When you flip a switch on in a circuit consisting of, say, a battery, inductor, and a resistor, the current obviously starts at zero and has to increase to reach a steady state of current value. Now, while we completely ignored this time of changing current in AP Physics 1, as it's usually rapid or almost instantaneous, and didn't concern us for simple DC circuits, it's precisely this window of time where inductors have an effect on a circuit. Because the current needs to increase from zero to some value, the current is changing. Thus, because currents in solenoids produce magnetic fields, which in turn produces a magnetic flux, the magnetic flux inside the inductor changes in this brief period as well. As a result, we can use Faraday's law of induction to calculate the EMF or potential difference associated with this inductor. The equation that we get is that the EMF across an inductor is equal to the negative of the inductance times the rate of change of current. Essentially, this will act as the Ohm's law of inductors, as we can use this EMF equation in Kirchhoff's loop rules in circuits. In addition, this equation also tells us two extremely interesting things. First, the negative sign reveals, to no one's surprise, that the EMF induced in the inductor goes in the opposite direction of the current flow, a consequence of Lenz's law. In addition, if the rate of change of current is zero, or if the current is steady and stable, the EMF across the inductor becomes zero as well, meaning it'll act the same as any stray piece of wire elsewhere in the circuit. The combination of all these equations with things we've learned before will eventually lead us to what's known as an LR circuit. However, that'll be the topic for a future video. For now, you can feel good that you've just finished learning about the basics of inductance and inductors.